Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The Storefront Purchasing and Shipping Products. So before we get started, we'll go over just a bit of housekeeping. All of your phones and your microphones have been muted. So what that means is all of the questions that you have, you should enter into the chat window. Devin is going to be answering all of those questions live, so you don't need to wait until the end to ask those. And a recording of this webinar is going to be available on our YouTube channel before the end of the week. So if you can't stay for the entire webinar or if you think you've missed something, be sure to catch that recording. And also, if you are using Club Express, and particularly if you're enjoying Club Express, we would love to hear from you. So visit clubexpress.com slash reviews for more information and leave us a review. Tell us what you like about us. It really helps other customers determine whether or not Club Express is a good fit for them. So when you go to clubexpress.com slash reviews, you can see a listing of all of the sites that we are currently listed on that you can leave a review for. And in addition to today's webinar, we have a bunch of upcoming webinars. So if you go to our calendar at clubexpress.com, you can see all of the webinars that we have coming up. We're going to be updating our webinar schedule by the end of this week. So be sure to visit that calendar before the week is out and you can see all of the upcoming webinars that we'll have scheduled. When you register for a webinar in advance, of course, there isn't a cost associated with it, but you have the opportunity to include questions that you would like us to see demonstrate live. So if you see an upcoming topic that you have a few burning questions on and you'd like to see something demonstrated or folded into the webinar, just feel free to register. And when you are asked those questions, go ahead and enter them into those fields. And of course, as I mentioned, all of our webinars and our tutorials are on our YouTube channel. So when you're watching any one of those videos, just be sure to hit that subscribe button. It isn't just so we get more followers on YouTube. It's so you get notified every time we upload a new tutorial or a new webinar. When you're on YouTube, you can search for clubexpress.com spelled out. And you can see that on your screen there and hit that subscribe button. And as I mentioned before, visiting clubexpress.com slash reviews allows you to leave us a review and helps other customers determine whether or not Club Express is going to be a good fit for their club or their association. So let's jump right in. Today's topic is our storefront purchasing products and fulfilling those orders and managing those orders. Now we have a companion webinar that is currently on our YouTube channel. Devin hosted a great webinar last week, configuring your products and your shipping methods. So a lot of what you're going to see today is going to be based on the things that we talked about in last week's webinar. So don't, uh, don't run away just yet. We'll go over everything today. We'll refer to some of the things that we've talked about in our previous webinar, but be sure to watch that companion webinar for more details on how to set up everything that we're going through today. Now, in today's webinar, we're going to go through purchasing products and managing orders. And I also wanted to mention, remember that when you activate the storefront for the first time, which is a built-in module, there is not an extra cost associated with the storefront. Your storefront's going to be in test mode. Now, once you have gone through testing out the storefront, completing a few orders, and we're going to go through some testing notes at the end of today's webinar, so stay tuned for that, give us a call, call our support team for a live storefront. We activate everything on the back end. Just give us a call or email us at support at, club, at clubexpress.com. And we'll go ahead and activate that storefront for you. So again, the storefront that you would be working with as soon as you activate it is going to be in test mode. We're going to talk about what test mode means, and we're going to go through those testing notes. But first, let's take a look at what we're going to be demonstrating today. First up, we are going to be purchasing products as a non-member. Then we'll go ahead and log in, purchase those as a member, and then finally as an administrator. So we'll see what the differences are between purchasing all of those items. And we're also going to take a look at choosing shipping methods as a user and what goes into picking out a shipping method and how that looks from both the user's perspective and then again as an admin from the admin's perspective. Now, remember that in last week's webinar, that's where we actually configured our shipping methods. So we're just going to do a brief overview of that today. 
be sure to watch our companion webinar for that detailed overview of our shipping methods. We're also going to go through purchasing digital products, what that looks like from both a non-member and a member's perspective. And then finally, we will go through managing orders and shipping out products as an administrator or, of course, a coordinator with access to the storefront. So the first thing that I want to do is go through our storefront as a non-member. So I'm currently logged into our, nor or excuse me, I'm not logged into our Northwest Balloon Club. I am visiting this as a non-member, just a general member of the public, but I've still placed my storefront on the non-member menu or the public menu of my site. So as you can see in the top right corner, I'm not yet logged in and I can visit my storefront as a member of the general public and view all of the products that are there. Now, in last week's webinar, we talked about adding products that are available to everyone and products that are available to members only. So take a look at what we're seeing within our storefront. So I can see six different products. And one of the things that I've included is a giant login button to notify users that they can log in to see more products. And I'm going to talk more about that when I'm getting ready to log in as a member. But for now, I have a handful of products that are available to me. Now, this is what the storefront is going to look like from a user's perspective. Now, even when I log in as a member, the actual layout of the storefront is not going to change for me. I might see additional products that are available to members only that are only going to be available after I've logged in, but the general layout is the same. I can see pricing information on the left-hand side. I can search through and filter my products by category and by price. And I can also search through just items that are on sale or just products that are featured. Now at the top right-hand corner, you can see that my storefront is still in test mode. So what that means is that all of the purchases that occur are not going to generate a transaction. And again, we're going to talk more about test mode of the storefront in just a little bit. But what I want to do is just go through and purchase a couple of products. Now, the actual purchasing part is not going to look very different from any online storefront that you might work with. You're going through, you're adding products to your cart. There might be some customization involved, and then you finally check out. So all of that is pretty familiar to most of us. We've all done a little bit of online shopping. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and select a couple of products and add them to my cart. So once I click a product, I can see more information about that product. This is all configured by the administrator or coordinator responsible for the storefront. They've added product. They've added one or more photos for the product. They include potentially a limit as to how many items can be purchased. So this limit could be just for me because I'm a non-member, or it could be a limit for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of these spice rubs to my cart just by adjusting the amount and adding this to my cart. Now I can see that at the top right hand corner, my check, uh, excuse me, my, my shopping cart has updated. And I also can see shopping cart at the top right hand corner next to the login button. Now, once I log in as a member, that shopping cart button still displays at the top. And then, of course, I'll have access to my member profile right next to it. Now I'm going to add one more item to my purchase here, and I am going to purchase a digital product. So the digital products that we're looking at are items that are going to be saved to your document library. And we went through adding digital products to the storefront in last week's webinar. They're slightly different than adding a physical product. But what's great is that, of course, there isn't a limit as to how many people can purchase those. The inventory never drops and you can store that all on your website. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this ballooning handbook to my cart as well. And that's going to be it for my purchase for today as the non-member. So I've gone ahead and added three products. I can select the shopping cart to view my shopping cart. I can continue shopping or I can proceed to check out. Now at the very top, I can see a little notice that asks me if I'm a club member and asks me to log in to check out with member pricing. Because if you'll recall, if you were at our webinar last week, you can actually designate separate pricing 
for several for all of your items for a member versus a non-member. So of course you might make member pricing slightly cheaper and you may not even make the product available to a non-member, but you could and just make the product a little more expensive, potentially even putting a purchase limit on that product for non-members. So when I'm taking a look at my cart, I can edit the quantity of anything in my cart. I can remove items from my cart. Of course, with a digital product, I'm not purchasing more than one of those. It's just one download. So I don't have the ability to edit that quantity. I'll go ahead and check out. And if you have used our storefront before, uh, you'll notice that there are some really nice aesthetic differences between our previous storefront and the updated user interface. It looks a lot more in line with what you're seeing in a lot of other online storefronts now. Now, the first part of this is again, to enter in your contact information or log in as a member. So the storefront shouts out several times that you may need to or may want to log in as a member to receive special pricing. Now, another reason, of course, that you'd want to log in as a member is that all of your contact information is saved to your member profile. So it just makes it easier to go through that checkout process. But I am actually not a member of this organization. I just heard about Manny's Spice Rub. I heard it was great. And I was curious about the ballooning handbook. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in my contact information. Now, of course, when you are when you are adding in or uh, adding in your contact information for a storefront purchase, all of that is going to be saved as a non-member record in your database. Now, when a non-member purchases something from your storefront, not only are they added to the non-member database, but they're also marked off as a storefront purchaser within mailing list categories. So keep that in mind that you do still have a way to further contact people who have made purchases in the storefront, especially when you're adding new products, you can use that mailing list category to let folks know that you've added maybe a few new t-shirts or different products throughout your storefront. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in just some quick contact information for Darla and Darla is going to finish this checkout process. Now, once I select continue, it's going to take me to our final checkout page where everything occurs in panels. Now at the very top, because I have checked out as a non-member, the system is going to assume that I might want to use the address that I just entered for my contact information. Of course, I can enter in an entirely different address. If I select another address, the address information panel below completely uh, uh, excuse me, the fields will be empty and I'd be able to edit and update that information as I'd like to. Next up, I can choose my shipping methods. Now, again, we're going to talk about setting up those shipping methods in just a moment, but from a user's perspective, I am seeing shipping methods that apply to my order. I don't know why those shipping methods apply to my order. That's determined by an administrator. This could be based on the location that the items are being shipped to. It could be based on the it could be based on the total price of my order. And again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. I'm actually going to choose Clubhouse Pickup. I happen to live really uh, close to the Clubhouse and I'm just going to go and pick it up. So my shipping and handling cost is going to be $0. I can add a gift message, but this is just for me. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to my order summary. If I wanted to add a gift message and I selected yes, I just type in my gift message and that can be included when the product is shipped. I'll go ahead and select no and continue to my order summary. I can view all of that information. Now, because this is a test order and we are in test mode, I'm not entering in any payment information. However, when you have an active storefront and non-members are coming to your site to make purchases, they're going to go to that final payment screen that's familiar to all of us, and they'll be able to make a payment right on your website using whatever payment methods you have designated as appropriate for your organization, whether that is cash or check only, maybe you have integrated with PayPal and you allow your uh, users to pay for items on your site using PayPal, or it could be a credit card payment. Whatever the case, they'll be able to use any of those payment methods to purchase products from your storefront. So I'll go ahead and save my test order. 
And there are a couple of things to note. And one of those I'm going to come back to when I talk about checking out as a member and that's purchasing a digital product. So let's talk about digital products and what happens to those when you're purchasing them as a non-member or a member. Now, all of these are stored in your document library, but that's not where members and non-members are going to actually access them. Members are able to access your digital products through a special link in their member profile. But you're probably wondering, well, how do non-members get that? Because as we all know, non-members do not have a member profile on your site. So what happens is non-members will actually get a confirmation email noting what they've purchased and, of course, an email letting them know that they may have an outstanding payment. So in this case, I wasn't able to make a payment right away. As a non-member working with a live storefront, they would likely be able to make a payment right away, or perhaps they might uh, you know, leave for a few minutes and come back with a, with a credit card that was in a different room somewhere. Once they actually pay for that digital product or pay for their entire order, they'll get a link sent to them that is a link to their digital product. That link, again, is triggered by payment for that digital product. So the non-member does not need to become a member to purchase that digital product if it's available to them. They can access it right from their inbox. Now, when I am purchasing items as a member, I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And I want to call out this login option. So I mentioned at the top of our uh, journey purchasing products as a non-member that I had added this to my storefront. Now, all this says is log in to see more. Some of the products are only available to logged in members. So I can go ahead and click this. I have set this up to just always display on my storefront. I have created a basically a dummy product. It's not really a product. People can add it to their carts, but it's just $0, so it really doesn't affect them at all. And it just notifies people who may not have logged in or tries to call their attention to the fact that some of those products are only going to be available to those logged in members. So that's just something that you can do in addition to all of the other notifications that the storefront gives uh, non-members who are not logged in to log in to see that special pricing. So let me go ahead and sign in here. And I am going to sign in as Colleen Carter. And Colleen Carter is going to make a couple of purchases today. So when I visit the storefront from Colleen's perspective, Colleen is just a regular member. You'll notice that she does not see a link to the control panel at the top of the website. So she has no rights whatsoever. Now, I see now that I have nine products that are available to me, again, because some of these products are only available to logged in members. So I can see that there's an additional ebook that's available. And I also have some uh, shirts that are available as well. So I am going to go ahead and purchase a t-shirt. Now, when purchasing a t-shirt, we have configured sizing and price and color options all of that is discussed in our companion webinar that is available on our YouTube channel, setting up products that have variations like size and color. So I'm going to go ahead and select just a couple of shirts here and add them to my cart. And I am also going to select a digital product. So we have our digital yearbook for the Northwest Balloon Club. And as an add-on, uh, some of the add-ons that we offer might be engraving or embroidery on a shirt. But in the case of our digital yearbook, one of the add-ons that we offer is just a nice package of all of the photos that we've used in the yearbook in case our members want to maybe put those on their Facebook page or print them out and frame copies of them somewhere. So I'm going to say that, yes, I would like a copy of those digital photos and I'll go ahead and I will add that to my cart. And finally, I'll go ahead and take a look at these ballooning shoes. Uh, maybe Colleen's not great at ballooning and she really needs these shoes to make her just a little bit better. I'll go ahead and select a size here. Now, once I've made my selection, I have the ability to add an add-on. So in this case, my add-on option would be adding my initials to the shoes. 
So I'll go ahead and select CC. I can see that in order to add that, uh, add that embroidery to those shoes, there's an additional $5 charge. I'll go ahead and add that to my cart. And now I have the same look that I'm used to seeing from a non-member's perspective. I have my cart that I can view and I can edit those options as well. And I can also just quickly check out. On the left-hand side, I have those same search and filter options that are available to me. And my storefront really doesn't look very much, uh, very different from the non-member's perspective. I'll go ahead and check out. And now as a member, when I'm checking out, all of my contact information has already been saved. So everything that's in my member profile, my name, my address, if you are allowing members to input multiple addresses, both their primary and their secondary address will be included as an option for shipping. I also have the ability to ship to an entirely different address. So if I'm shipping this to someone as a gift, or if I just want something shipped to a completely different address than the one that I have shipped, maybe it's my work address, I can enter in an entirely different address. I will go ahead and enter in another address and I will ship it to Club Express. And finally, I'll again choose my shipping methods. Now the shipping methods that are available to me are the same shipping methods that were available as a non-member to Darla. Now the shipping methods are not going to vary based on whether you're a non-member or a member. And again, we're gonna go through our shipping method review in just a moment here. So I'll go ahead and select two day shipping. I'm really anxious to get these items and I'll continue to my gift message and my order summary. So again, because this storefront is in test mode, it's not going to advance me to the payment page. But if it did, of course, if I was a member, I could pay with any means uh, available to me. As a member, you also have the ability, if credit card payments are enabled, to save a credit card to your member profile for easier and quicker checkout. So remember that all of the payment options that are available to you are going to be available when you're using the storefront. It's not going to take you to an outside space. It's going to happen all on your website. So I will go ahead and save this test order of a couple of t-shirts, the digital yearbook and my ballooning shoes. And the last quick review that I want to take is purchasing products as an administrator. And we won't go through the entire process. I just wanna point out a couple of differences. I'm going to log in as Martin Smith. Martin Smith is our favorite administrator of the Northwest Balloon Club. Now, when Martin logs in, of course, he sees the control panel link and he can go ahead and visit the storefront. Now, with Martin's login, I see that I have 10 products available, and one of these is an administrative test product. Only Martin can see those, or only other club administrators can see those. Again, we talked about adding products to your storefront in our companion webinar, which is available on our YouTube channel. An administrative product or test product, those are different statuses and availabilities that you can apply to the product. So. Right now, my entire storefront is in test mode. I'm testing everything. But when you've activated your storefront, you won't have the ability to return the entire storefront to test mode just so you can continue to add products. So that's why you have the option to add individual products in test mode once your storefront is live. So right now, this is a product that Martin is testing out. He just wants to make sure that the checkout process works, that all of the size variations and perhaps the color variations that he's added display properly for the user. So keeping in mind that even what your even after your storefront goes live, you still have the ability to continue testing to make sure the experience for your users is a good one. Now, an additional thing to note, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of things to Martin's cart. Martin is going to purchase a cat kilt from Colleen. And once I go to check out as an administrator, my checkout process is going to be basically the same. The only difference is the very first page that is shown to the administrator asks if they're placing an order for themselves, for another member, or for a non-member. The rest of the checkout process is going to be exactly the same. Now, 
as an administrator, like in other spaces on your Club Express site, when you go through certain steps, you can perform those actions as yourself, as a member, as a non-member. This is true for registering for events or a lot of other things on the site. So the same is true for the storefront. And again, that checkout process is going to look the same for an administrator as it would for a member. If they're purchasing products for themselves, all of their information will populate. If they choose another member, it's going to populate all of their contact information. And of course, if they choose a non-member, they have the ability to search the non-member database if it's a returning purchaser or enter in new contact information. Remember that anytime a non-member interacts with your site, their information is going to be saved to your non-member database, which you can access through the people manager. If they know that they have the ability to return as a non-member, they can search for themselves if they know that they've purchased something from your site before or that they've registered for an event or perhaps made a donation. Now, let's talk about our shipping methods. Let's see a quick review of the shipping methods that we have available. Now, with our most recent update to the storefront, we added an additional way that you can configure shipping prices. Remember to watch our companion webinar where we go through setting up each shipping method. I'll just go through a brief overview today. The flat rate method that you see on the left is going to be the method that you're probably familiar with if you've, if you've been using the storefront already. So. Flat rate shipping is going to be based on the total price of your order, or the flat rate shipping will just be available no matter the price. You have the ability to set pricing limits. So perhaps a, an order of up to $25 has a shipping cost of $10, but an order over $25 has uh, free shipping available. So that would be the way that you'd structure flat rate shipping. And you can see that with all of the shipping methods that I have selected, those are the ones that were appearing for me. Now, the other shipping method that you have is the advanced shipping method. Advanced shipping is based on weight and region. So when you're adding products to your storefront, even if you've selected the flat rate shipping method, you're still going to enter in a weight of the product in the event that you do choose to switch to that advanced method. Now, a couple of things to note. If you want to switch over to the advanced shipping method and start configuring it, then determine maybe it's not quite right for you and you want to switch back to flat rate, you won't lose any of the information that you've input in either one of those cases. So we have been testing the storefront shipping methods back and forth, and we've been switching back and forth between flat rate and advanced shipping. All of that information is saved for you, so you can switch back and forth if you need to. Again, the advanced shipping is based on weight and region. Now, in each case, the user might have several shipping methods that are available to them, but again, they're going to be paid based on either the total cost of their order, the weight of their order, their shipping address. The user doesn't really see a difference. They're simply selecting from that drop-down list. So go back and review our companion webinar and take a look at the different ways that you would configure shipping, either flat rate shipping method or the advanced shipping method where you're able to configure it by region and by weight. It's a really exciting feature, something that a lot of customers had asked us for, and we were really, really pleased to be able to bring that to you. Now, next up, now that we have gone through adding products, we've created some orders, let's talk about shipping and orders. Again, basic shipping is going to be based on the total price of the order. Advanced shipping is going to be based on the shipping location selected or entered by the user. So whether that is an address they've already entered or if it's a new address that they're adding. Partially filling orders. We're going to go through order statuses and all of the different statuses that you might see, as well as the order manager. And something to keep in mind is that you have the ability to partially fill and ship orders. And that is something that you set in your storefront options. So go back and review our companion webinar. If you as an organization determine that you might want to partially ship orders, uh, perhaps you have a lot of products that sell out very often. And it might be a little bit difficult for you to get some in on such a short notice. You might want to ship out half of the user's order and then go back and ship the rest. Again, something that you can set up in your storefront options. 
So let's take a little bit of a break here and talk about the order manager page. I am going to navigate to the control panel and find my storefront in the money tab. And you'll see here that storefront is in the website module section. And it also notes that it's in test mode. I'll go ahead and select that. Now by default, because in my storefront options, I've configured it to always show me the product manager. I have to just click this button to go right to my order manager screen. I can configure the storefront to show me my order manager screen by default right away. It's entirely up to you. Perhaps while you're configuring the storefront, you'd like it to take you to the product page right away because that's where you're spending most of your time. Once you have all of those products good to go, maybe you want to start going to directly to the order manager. Now, at the very top, you'll see a very familiar Club Express search feature. This is going to allow you to search through all of your, or, all of your orders by the date of the order, the order status, and we're going to talk a little bit more about status in a moment by product, user's name, and then of course we can sort through all of our items. I am going to select all and view all of my orders and we'll talk about why I've selected all in just a moment and I'll go ahead and click search. And now I can see a list of every single order that has been made within my storefront. On the left-hand side, I see my order dates. The reference number column is blank because these uh, orders have not created any transactions. Remember that our storefront is in test mode. So those reference numbers do not exist because the transaction has not been created. Next up, we have our member or non-member name. And of course, it's a link. So you can click on that particular link to view quick contact information. Finally, whether or not they're a member, the status of the order, and we're going to come back and talk about status in just a moment, the total number of items in the order, the price, again, payment date for storefronts that are in test mode is going to be a blank column because no transactions are generated and no payment is being made. And then last, of course, we have the maintain column. Options in the maintain column are going to depend on the status of the order. At the very top, you'll see that we have a canceled order. So all I can do is just select that trash can icon to delete it. Next up, we have order details, which we'll talk about when we actually start filling orders. We also have our shipment details. And then of course, we have the ability to cancel orders. Once an order has been filled, we no longer have the ability to cancel that order. So that's why you'll see in some cases, that trash can icon does not appear. Now let's talk about our order status timeline. There are several statuses that you may see when you're managing orders. And as we go through these statuses, we're going to go back into our demo club to take a look at what that looks like from the admin perspective within the order manager. So one status that you might see, um, it's kind of like seeing a bald eagle, is in process. That status occurs if you happen to be in the order manager when a member is actively shopping. You'll see that member's information pop up at the very top of that order status, or excuse me, the order manager grid. And you'll see that status is in process. They haven't added anything to their cart. They have not checked out. They're simply uh, shopping through the storefront. The next status, should that member or even a non-member determine that they would like to purchase products and they make that purchase, their order is pending until they pay for the order. So in a lot of other spaces on your site, that is a designation for transactions that we use often, pending. So if you have a member that joins your organization and doesn't pay their membership signup fee right away, their membership status is pending until they actually pay pay their membership dues, and then they're an active member. So it's the same, uh, it, it has the same effect here. Again, if the user, whether they're a member or not, hasn't paid for the order, the order will be pending. Now, if we go back into our demo club, we can see that many of these orders are still pending. In test mode, you are never going to be able to pay for those orders. So the orders are always going to be pending and then partially filled or filled, depending on how you're testing out that process. So again, once the user pays for that order, it will change 
to another status. But until then, that order is going to stay uh, pending. The next status, if your storefront is live, is ready to ship. What triggers the ready to ship status is that the user has paid for their order. Now, again, because we're in test mode, we will not see the ready to ship option. Ready to ship just says that this order is ready to ship out. You can start filling it because the user's paid. We can visit our order details screen and our shipment screen to manage this order at this point. Now, we are going to be managing pending orders again because we aren't able to apply a payment to these orders. So let's go ahead and take a pending order that we have here. And let's go ahead with Darla's order. Darla is the non-member that just submitted an order. That order is still pending. I'm going to visit the details screen to view the details for the order. At the very top, I can see that the order status is pending because the user hasn't paid. And I can see that she's ordered a handful of items and each item has its own status. So not only does the entire order have a status of maybe it's pending, ready to ship, partially filled or filled, but each product within the order is going to have a status of either open or filled. Now, the ballooning handbook is filled because that link was sent out to Darla. So the system considers once that link has gone out, the system has done its job and the ballooning handbook is now in Darla's hands. I can see right next to that whether or not it's shipped. The ebook, because it's a digital product, does not actually get physically shipped. So that's never going to say that it's been shipped. All of our pricing information. And if I go back into the previous page and I bring up Darla's order one more time and I select shipments, this is where I can actually start filling the order, shipping it out and changing that status. Now, there are a couple of things to note here. At the very top, again, I have more information. I have my order status. All of this information is the same as what we've seen before. I can change some of the information. I can view my gift message. I can print out a pick list at the very bottom. I can select ship with quantities shown and it marks the order as filled first. Then I have the opportunity to ship it. So I can choose to print a pack list and a shipping label right from this screen. All that's going to do is it's going to display two pop-ups as I ship the order. I can also uncheck these and print my own shipping labels, or I can decide not to print shipping labels if the user is picking them up from my clubhouse. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I would like to ship this out with the quantities shown. I am going to fill Darla's order by saying ship with quantities shown. And now I get those pop-ups. So first we have our pack list. I'll go ahead and cancel out of that. And then next we have our shipping label and I'll go ahead and cancel those and close out of those. Now, once I have fulfilled the order, I'm taken to my order fulfillment screen. And I have the ability to see the date, whether or not it's shipped. And I can do a handful of additional things. I can edit the shipment. Now, this is where I would go to actually mark the order as having been shipped. I can change the shipping method if I'd like. I can change the shipping date, enter in a tracking number, and enter in the shipping cost. Next up, I can reprint the packing list and the shipping label. I can delete a fulfillment, and I can also send a confirmation email to the uh, purchaser, letting them know that their order has been filled and their order is ready to ship. Now, before I actually ship out this order, the order has been filled. Let's go back into our order manager and take a look at Darla's order right now. Now, Darla's order has gone straight from pending to filled. And because that order has been filled, I can no longer delete or cancel that order. I can go right back into shipments. And again, I'm in that order fulfillment stage now because I've already filled the order. I can select that edit icon, mark the order as shipped. I can enter in a tracking number, go ahead and save my changes. Now I no longer have the ability to delete that fulfillment. And if I go back into my order manager, something to note is that on the order manager screen, your status 
will only ever finally stay filled. The status of the order won't say shipped. So a couple of good indicators to keep in mind as to whether or not your orders have been shipped, a really quick way to view that. If we take a look at our search feature, at the very top, the order statuses that we can filter our search by are ready and partially filled, unshipped, which includes filled and partially filled orders or all orders. When you're testing the storefront and you're in test mode, make sure that you're always searching for all of your orders, regardless of status, because remember that all of your orders are always going to be pending when you're creating them. They are never going to get to that ready to ship option. So the first status where your orders are either ready to ship or partially filled may not bring up all of the orders you want to work with. And again, if going forward, you're looking to find filled orders that have not yet shipped out so that you can actually get those out to your customers, just select unshipped and it's going to bring up any orders, either filled or partially filled, which have not yet shipped. And then of course, if I go into Darla's order, I can go into shipments and quickly see that the order has in fact shipped. Now, an additional status that you might see is partially filled. So partially filled just means that the order has been partially filled and you have possibly shipped part of the order as well. And of course, just like previously, we can check the product status and the shipment status right from the same screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at Colleen's order. Now, Colleen's order included, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this, shoes, a digital product, and it also included a couple of t-shirts. So I'm going to go back into my previous page, and I am going to select shipments. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Darla's member profile, as well as Martin Smith's member profile to see how you would access those digital downloads, but let's focus on shipping out those physical products first. Now I'm going to say that perhaps because of the uh, embroidery, Colleen's order is not quite yet ready to ship with everything, but that's going to take a few weeks. So we want to go ahead and ship out everything that's ready, which includes these t-shirts. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these labels. I don't need those right now. And I am going to deselect the shoes that Colleen has ordered. Those are not ready just yet. And I'll go ahead and say that I'm going to ship with quantity shown just the t-shirts. So now when I go ahead and view my order fulfillment page, I still have the ability to add in those ballooning shoes. But right now, what I want to do is go back into my order manager. And now if we take a look at Colleen's order, it's partially filled, which makes sense since we only filled part of the order. Now, if I go back into my shipments, I can see that I only filled that part of the order. I have not yet shipped it. I have the ability to ship part of the order, or I can say, I've just filled it. I'm going to set it aside and I'll wait until the shoes are ready and send everything at one time. Again, the ability to ship out partial orders is going to be based on the settings that you've selected within your storefront options. Now let's talk about a couple of final statuses and how we get there. So some final statuses that you might see would be partially filled and canceled, and then finally fully canceled. So our additional statuses, partially filled, canceled, just means that part of the order has been filled, but the remaining portion of the order has been canceled. So in this example, if we take a look at Colleen's order and we take a look at our shipments, part of the order has been filled. I can ship that. And I can also then choose in the order manager to cancel the remaining part of the order. And then of course, a canceled status just means that the entire order has been canceled. None of that order shipped. So all of those statuses are things that you might see as you're going through the entire process of creating and shipping orders. Now, really what you're going to focus on would be filling that order and then finally shipping that order. Now, as I mentioned previously, we are on the order manager side. So just for quick reference, I'm going to go right back into the control panel and visit the storefront one more time. 
Again, because my default is taking me to the product manager, all I have to do is select this orders button and that takes me right to the order manager screen. Couple of additional items. We have reports and exports that are available within the order manager and the product manager. So all of our reports are going to help you manage your inventory. They're going to help you manage orders. They're going to help you manage all of the categorized orders that you've had across your site as well. On the order manager side, we have order reports. And if I switch right back over to the product side and I select reports, we have all of our reports that are based on products, not on orders. And then of course, I'll go right back into my order side just one more time and I'll select that export option. And I can export a list of open orders and filled orders if you prefer to work with that in a different format other than what's on the order manager. Now let's talk about where we find our digital products. Now, as a non-member, remember that we were able to locate those digital products in our email. As soon as a non-member pays for that digital product, they're going to get an email with a special link that takes them right to it. As a member, even as an administrator, you'll find any of your digital products in your member profile. So when Martin visits his member profile, when he's purchased digital products, on the right-hand side, under your website functions, all of your members are going to see a download bank. That download bank is where they get special access to the digital products that they've purchased. And I can download those. And then of course, I can choose to save a local copy. I can also clear out documents that can't be downloaded anymore. Now, when you are adding digital products to your storefront, you can put a download time limit on those products. So in this case, I believe our download time limit is 30 days. However, there might be people who uh, purchase products and then forget about them. Well, that link is going to expire at some point. So I can clear out any bad links, any links that I'm no longer able to access just to clean up my download bank. This is really helpful if your organization has you know, maybe a lot of eBooks that get regularly updated that you're waiting for users to purchase and then they can clear out older versions if they need to. Now let's talk about some of our testing notes. So as I mentioned, you won't ever see ready to ship as a status when you're working with your storefront in test mode. So as you're going through that process, don't, uh, don't get frustrated if you aren't seeing how to pay for that option. You know, we might be used to going through and maybe creating a couple of test transactions for ourselves so that we can zero them out or comp them or remove the charge. But in this case, you won't see any transactions that are going to be created as you're testing the storefront. And when you're selecting your order status, search for all orders to start filling those orders. Because remember that all of your orders, when you create them, are always going to say pending. And of course, testing is never going to generate a transaction. And testing non-member purchases adds the non-member to your database. So you, of course, have the ability to remove non-members from your database. And let's very briefly go over how to do that. We do have several webinars that discuss managing your non-member database, but I'm going to quickly go into my control panel and we'll go into our people manager in the people tab. And if I select non-members and maybe even to make it a little bit easier for myself, I'm also going to select the category of storefront customer. I'll go ahead and search and I can see a handful of non-members that have been added. You know, maybe I know for a fact that Ricky Alexi is a dummy storefront member that I created for the purpose of this webinar. I can go ahead and I can drop that non-member. I can do a handful of other things as well, but just keep in mind that as you're testing out those non-member purchases, they will get added to your database. Of course, that really doesn't affect you that much. Uh, we do have, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we do have the ability to remove those non-members from the database. So, uh, Devin, how are we doing on questions today? We're doing really well. We've got a few interesting ones. Um, mainly people are asking about uh, making 
uh, two of our questions are about making aesthetic changes. Someone wanted to see how to change the name of the storefront from the control panel. That's a great question. So within the control panel, I'm gonna go ahead and find the storefront in the money tab. And I'm gonna use our configure option within the control panel to edit the name of the storefront. And this is actually something you can do with every single of the modules that we have listed there for you. So instead of the menu text being storefront, I would like my store to be called shop. And I can change the browser title as well, but I'm going to keep the function name as storefront test mode. The function name is what I see when I'm looking at the control panel. So I know that's the storefront. I know it's still in test mode. And now if I take a look at my menu, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to go in to edit the menu. The menu updated on its own. And if I go into my shop, we can see in the top left-hand corner of my browser, I'm using Chrome currently. So you can see that in the tab, the text has changed for that as well. Okay. And then one of the other options someone was asking about is how to change uh, availability and quantity for members and non-members. It's something we covered last week, but I figured we could just take a quick look at it when you're editing um, an existing product. Absolutely. How to control, yeah, the availability for non-members and quantity limitations for those as well. Yes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the spice rub. So if I edit the product and I take a look at the very top, we have our basic information for the food product. Then we have pricing and our quantity limits. So prices are set for both the member and the non-member because I've made this product available to non-members. If I deselect that checkbox, my non-member price goes away and it becomes one of those products that you have to log in in order to be able to purchase. Underneath that is where I select my quantity limit. So in this case, there's a quantity limit for everyone. I can select no limit. People can purchase as much as they'd like, or I can say that the limit is for non-members only. If the limits for non-members only, of course, only non-members would be limited as to the amount that they can actually purchase. Okay. And the rest of the stuff we had was mostly um, improvement suggestions. One that was uh, pretty interesting was the ability to uh, change or remove the default searches when you're looking at the storefront as someone who's shopping. Um, it's not something we have the ability for right now, but we are always working on improving the storefront. So that's something that we'll definitely take to uh, our developers. And then people were ask also asking about other ways to limit quantity and availability. Uh, another thing that we don't have quite yet, but it's something that is uh, a good thing for us to take to our development team for future suggestions and improvements. Um, other than that, we didn't have a lot of other questions today. All right. Well, I want to go ahead and thank everyone for attending our webinar. Uh, remember, of course, that we do have a companion webinar that is available to you. Uh, so be sure to check our YouTube channel. <coughs> Excuse me. Be sure to check our YouTube channel and wait for this week's webinar as well. Uh, again, Take a look at our Club Express event calendar so that you can register for upcoming webinars. We will have that updated by the end of the week. So you'll get to see our upcoming webinar schedule and get those on your calendar right away. So thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye.